What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're checking out this big CPU cooler right here. This is the Corsair A115. So let's go ahead and take a look. When you think of the name Corsair, air coolers are not something that comes to mind. You know, they are really known for their AIO or liquid CPU coolers. Now, if you're wondering if this is actually the first Corsair air cooler, it's not. They came out with the A500 all the way back in 2020, and we actually reviewed it, and it was a really good air cooler. And I always wondered why Corsair never came out with another air cooler after that but they are back here with the A115. And I think a lot of companies are coming out with high performance air coolers. I think one of the big reasons is that one, a lot of people don't wanna go the AIO routes. And then on top of that, a lot of small form factor, maybe mini ITX cases, they don't necessarily have a lot of room for AIOs, but they do have room for a big air cooler like this. And we actually saw a bunch of cases like that at CES, so I think Corsair is sort of following that trend. Taking a first look at the cooler here, you can see it is quite big. Now I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions up on the screen like I always do. This cooler is also gonna weigh in at 1,590 grams. And as you can see, Corsair has gone with an all black design. So both of the fans are black, the two heat sink towers are black, the heat pipes are black, everything on this cooler is all black. Starting out with the front fan, we have Corsair's AF140 Elite fan. These fans have Corsair's air guide technology, which utilizes anti-vortex vanes to direct airflow into a concentrated stream. These fans will spin between 400 and 1600 RPM with airflow between 15.3 and 84.5 CFM, static pressure between 0.1 and 1.73, and a noise level between five and 33.9 dBA. Looking at the cooler from the side, we can see the dual tower dual fan design. The fans attach to the cooler using a ratcheting fan mounting system. This has actually been slimmed down from the A500. Basically you slide the fans into a rail system. It actually works quite well as you'll see in our installation. Moving around to the back of the cooler, we can get a better look at the design of the heatsink towers. Each tower has an array of 90 nickel plated cooling fins, which provide a large surface area for rapid heat dissipation. The fins do have a serrated design with a sawtooth like edge, which will minimize sound profile. While we've seen top caps on a lot of these larger coolers, Corsair has gone with a more traditional look with just their logo on one of the heatsink towers. Coming up from the base of the cooler are six six millimeter thick high capacity copper heat pipes. These heat pipes go up into each heatsink tower in a U fashion, which is pretty typical for dual tower coolers. The base of the cooler is made of nickel plated copper and it will ship with Corsair's XTM70 thermal paste pre-applied. While I'm okay with pre-applied thermal paste on entry level CPU coolers, I'm not sure how I feel about it on high end coolers like this. We're gonna be doing our installation here on an Intel Z490 system. So our installation should be pretty much the same across the board for all modern Intel sockets. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is find the Intel backplate and attach it through the back side of your motherboard, lining up the pegs with the holes in your motherboard. Take the Intel standoffs and screw them into the pegs in the backplate. This will secure the backplate to your motherboard and be sure to install them with the black washer facing down. Now install the Intel mounting brackets, securing them in place with the included thumb screws. These bars need to be installed on the top and bottom of the socket. Remove the center fan from the cooler and then carefully place it on top of your CPU, lining up the screws on each side of the cooler with the holes in the mounting brackets. Using a screwdriver, go ahead and secure the cooler. Now you may need to move the front fan up a bit if you have larger memory. Finally, go ahead and connect each fan to the included Y connector and then connect the Y connector to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. With the cooler fully installed, we can see that it does 100% cover your memory. And if you do have larger memory, you will have to move that front fan up. So it's definitely something you wanna keep in mind. When it comes to testing, we test both temperatures as well as noise levels. So here's a full breakdown of our test system.
as we come to the end here, I kind of wonder why Corsair hasn't put out more air coolers. Like this is a really good air cooler and it's kind of impressive to see Corsair not come out with an air cooler for almost four years. And then we have this, which is one of the best performing air coolers that we've ever tested. I said in our last air cooler video that the Cooler Master Master Air MA824 Stealth was the best air cooler that we've ever tested. And this actually ties it. And it's actually better than that cooler in the idle test, which is just awesome. I mean, this is a great high performance air cooler. So if you are running a, you know, Core i9 Ryzen 9 and you want an air cooler, this is something that you definitely need to consider because again, it is that high end air cooler. I also like the all black design, giving it that, you know, either that Noctua Chromex black or that zero dark from deep cool look. I mean, everything on this cooler is all black and it just looks awesome there as well. On top of that, this cooler is actually really easy to install. The fans just sort of pull off and they have that ratcheting system, which is extremely easy to use. And I didn't have any issue getting this installed. And I don't think you would have any issue mounting this inside your case. We do all, all of our installations, of course, outside so we can show you guys, but you could easily get this installed with your motherboard mounted in the case, no problem. The only thing you really wanna consider with this cooler is that one, it will completely cover your memory as you can see here. And then on top of that, if you do have memory that is even a slight bit larger than normal modules like if you have an rgb module that does have the the uh spreader on the top you're gonna have to move this front fan up which we had to do and it just it kind of messes up the overall look of the cooler not the biggest deal for a lot of people but again that's something that you definitely want to consider now corsair is going to be selling this um, for $99.99, which as I've said multiple times, that is the going rate for high-end air coolers. I will have a link below where you can go ahead and pick this up. But overall, for not coming out with an air cooler in four years, this is an excellent air cooler from Corsair. Now, of course, like I said, I will have links below where you can go ahead and pick this up, but I'll also have a link to our full written review over at thinkcomputers.org. If you have any questions about this cooler, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.